in Bahrain at the invitation of Her Excellency Sheikha May. And uh, we had the pleasure already to meet her and to discuss with her uh, in her capacity now as a general director of the state Tretiakov Gallery. Mrs. Uh, Tregulova graduated from the Art Studies Department of Moscow State University. Then she worked as a curator of international exhibitions in Russian art in the Vucevic All-Soviet Union Production Artistic Enterprise. In 1993 to 1994, she completed the internship at the Solomon Guggenheim Museum in New York. From 1998 till 2000, she was the head of the Foreign Relations and Exhibition Department at the Pushkin State Museum of Fine Arts. From 2002 to 2013, she was Deputy Director General for Exhibition Proceedings and International Relations at the Moscow Kremlin State History and Culture Open Art Museum. From August 2013, 13, she is the Director General of the Rosizo State Museum Exhibition Center, and from November 2018, she is the member of the Presidential Council for Culture and Arts. So we are very, very pleased to welcome Mrs. Zelfira Tregulova and to have to listen to her about uh, the work she's performing, she was performing, and what she is going to explain to us in this beautiful center, Sheikh Ibrahim Center, and I welcome you on behalf of Sheikh Hamey Al Khalifa. Thank you. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to be present today here in Sheikh Ibrahim uh, Center at the invitation of uh, Sheikh May, whom I met several months ago in Moscow during her visit at uh, the uh, exhibition which became during COVID times, a kind of uh, uh, a candidate for the Guinness Book of Records. We uh, had more than 300,000 visitors for that uh, show. And uh, Sheikh Hamey was uh, so kind as to invite me to come to Bahrain and uh, to share our experience of what we were doing at the State Tretic of Gallery uh, during uh, the last uh, years. Uh, I became a director for, of the State uh, Tretikov Gallery seven years ago in uh, February 2015 uh, after working uh, in two major Russian museums at the Pushkin Museum and the State Kremlin uh, Museums and was invited to take this position as a kind of a crisis manager. Uh, though I became a director of the Tretsikov at the time when my colleagues uh, uh, in the whole of the world uh, who are museum directors start to think about a position of an honorary professor at the university. But uh, it seems uh, um, that experience which I had received during all of my working uh, years uh, uh, helped me to uh, go online the contemporary uh, tendencies and trends and uh, helped to uh, build up a team, uh, a team of colleagues of different generations uh, from the uh, eldest curators and we have some curators who are uh, approaching 80 years. I just need to indicate that there is no retirement age in Russia. And ending up with very young uh, curators, curators in contemporary art, or curators who want uh, to work in the field of classical Russian uh, art. So 
Let's go on. Uh, and I will be happy to answer your questions after I will be over with my uh, presentation. Uh, so, the State Tretikov uh, Gallery. When I started uh, going abroad in the uh, capacity of a museum director, I once was asked, Tretikov Gallery, which artists do you represent? Um, the name gallery sometimes uh, uh, gives people a false uh, impression that that's a kind of a private gallery which is representing contemporary artists. Uh, the State Tretikov Gallery is really uh, one of the oldest museums in Russia. Last year we celebrated 165 anniversary and it was founded by a private person, a wealthy Moscow merchant, Pavel Tretikov, who being 26 years old uh, before his first trip abroad, wrote his last will and he already started collecting art and in this will he formulated uh, the mission which he put in front of him to create the first in the country museum of national artistic uh, school. So uh, what is the Tretikov gallery uh, now? Uh, we are one of the leading players on the global art scene and I'm uh, happy uh, to tell you that this year we received uh, the Art Newspaper Russia Prize as the best museum of the year in Russia and you see this prize on the screen and uh, during the last five years uh, we received four of such prizes two times for the best exhibition of the year and two times for the best museum of the year and according to the International Art Newspaper rating uh, in uh, one of the most complicated years, in 2021, uh, we uh, took place number nine among the top most visited museums in the uh, world. So, oh, yeah. uh, so uh, I told that the museum was founded uh, 165 years ago. It has several buildings and uh, on the screen you see now the building uh, which uh, uh, encompasses uh, original uh, buildings and uh, original buildings of the gallery and of Pavel Tritikov's house. This building was uh, erected in 1902. Two, uh, according to the design of a very famous Russian artist Viktor uh, Vesnitsov and was inaugurated uh, several years after Pavel Tretyakov's uh, uh, death. Uh, here you see the portrait of Pavel Tretyakov by Ilya Repin, one of the leading Russian uh, artists and his enthusiasm, uh, intention uh, vision and understanding of his very special mission. I repeat, he was a private person and he, come to this, he came to this idea much earlier than the state and the emperor's family started thinking about the creation of a museum of Russian artistic school in St. Petersburg, which ended up in late uh, uh, 19th century by the creation of the state Russian uh, Museum. So today uh, our collection which started with few paintings uh, uh, purchased by Pavel Tretikov in 1856 uh, has uh, more than 200 uh, masterpieces which are placed in two big major buildings uh, in the very center and very heart of Moscow. On the screen you see our galleries in Lavrushinsky Lane which present uh, Russian art from 11th century icons up to the early 20th century. Uh, we have three main buildings uh, in Moscow. Uh, the one to the left you already saw, the one in the middle is a huge building next to Gorky Park along the Moskva River, where we present the biggest permanent installation of Russian uh, 20th century art and where we accept uh, 
uh, hundreds and thousands uh, of uh, hundreds of thousands of visitors uh, every year for our main uh, temporary exhibitions. And the building uh, to the right is uh, uh, the building uh, which is focused uh, on uh, educational programs and also has smaller exhibition galleries where we present the most precious uh, exhibitions. Uh, so here you can see the interiors uh, of the old building, of the building at Krimsky Val, uh, built in the 60s and 70s, and uh, one more building in Lavrushinsky Lane. Uh, we um, possess or uh, under our umbrella, there are seven historical artist houses and artist studio. Um, and that is why it was so interesting for me to see yesterday and today uh, what was accomplished here uh, with creation of uh, this incredible uh, group of almost 30 houses uh, where uh, heritage, historical references are incredibly well and in a very sophisticated way fused with uh, modernity. It's an incredible example and uh, I must admit we have uh, uh, much to learn from you here in uh, Bahrain. Speaking about these seven historical uh, houses and studios, you see to the uh, left the uh, house, which was the house of Viktor Vesnitsov, who created the design for the Tritikov Gallery. And to the right, you see uh, the uh, house, which we inaugurated this January as Pavel and Sergei Tritikov um, Memorial Museum but which was uh, in such a poor condition that for decades uh, uh, it was uh, a place for homeless people and nobody in Moscow and in the country knew that it is in fact a sacred place for every uh, Russian. So we managed to create a museum there uh, working uh, in some way uh, similar um, to what was done here, paying attention to every detail and approaching sponsors for the support so that you can provide for the highest quality and the most innovative approach, um, uh, which is not burdened by the necessity to go through state tenders where the one who gives you the lowest price and the lowest quality is the winner. Uh, here you can see uh, three photos. The photo to the left is the photo from the studio of Viktor Vesnitsov. You saw uh, his uh, house studio on the previous slide. In the middle, uh, we show the project for the renovation of the studio of the greatest living Russian artist, Ilya uh, Kabakov, who donated his studio to us in order to create a public museum. And we are going to open, with the help of sponsors, of course, uh, a museum devoted to Moscow conceptual art uh, in two years there. And to the right, you see the photo uh, of the newly opened museum of Pavel and Sergei Tritikov. This is the cabinet of Sergei Tritikov, who was Pavel's brother, and who, uh, contrary to his elder brother, was collecting uh, uh, Western European art. So when I um, became uh, a director of the Tretzikov Gallery, I thought that what the gallery is missing is a kind of a systematic approach. So we announced international uh, competition for the creation of the strategic plan for the museum. And we managed to have uh, uh, such outstanding international museum leaders as late Martin Roth, who was at that time director of the Victoria Albert Museum, or Michael Govan, director of the Los Angeles County Museum, who participated in the selection of the company which finally 
created the strategic plan for uh, the Tretsikov uh, Gallery. Uh, it was a British company, Event Communications, uh, which uh, um, worked together with uh, uh, AEA uh, Consulting from uh, USA. Uh, we worked together with them. They came to Moscow six or seven times. Uh, and out of all of that, a program on 356 pages emerged a program with the roadmap for um, the quick successes uh, and with uh, the strategic planning up to uh, 2025. And we announced three major types of transformations. Uh, transformation of our audience experience, uh, transformation of our spaces, and which is maybe the most important transformation of ourselves. So um, I will try to talk uh, what came out of that. And it's interesting that even after the first year of realization of this program, and uh, it was finished in January of 2016, so already in 2017, uh, we uh, hit the planned results of uh, uh, 2021. Uh, so uh, I was telling you about three major buildings and seven uh, smaller um, houses, which are um, museums uh, and uh, artist studios. So uh, here you can see how they are split on the map of Moscow. The Tretikov Gallery uh, today is not only Moscow. Uh, we were among the last ones to start this program of affiliated branches in Russian regions. Uh, but what we managed to, uh, to create uh, was partially a local initiative with our um, affiliated branch in the city of Samara, uh, a big city with uh, 1.4 million inhabitants, uh, a city of technical uh, intelligentsia, and two other affiliated branches, one in Kaliningrad and another one in Vladivostok, uh, were part of the national cultural program initiated by our president. So here we show the map uh, of uh, Russia uh, with uh, um, our Moscow venue and three affiliated branches in Vladivostok, uh, Kaliningrad and uh, Samara. They all are in the process of being built. They are all different from architectural point of view. I will allow myself to start with Samara. We are planning to inaugurate uh, uh, this building with our first exhibitions uh, within one year, so in spring of 2023. We are located in a fantastic uh, building. Uh, it's one of the best pieces of Russian constructivism, uh, created by a female architect in uh, 1932. Her name uh, uh, was Yekaterina Maximova, and it was a, a factory kitchen which was part of the uh, new construction of a big industrial plant in uh, Samara. So uh, it was realization of some kind of utopian idea uh, that women could be liberated from the kitchen work. So uh, there should be kitchen factories which would produce uh, uh, food which people could take to their home and just heat it. Uh, very close to the concept uh, which we are more and more facing with uh, uh, today. Uh, so you see here the plan and you see the uh, original uh, photo. And when you see from above, the building has the shape of a hammer and sickle. Uh, two other uh, buildings are in the far west and in the far east of our huge country. Uh, first, I would like to show the project for the Tretikov Gallery uh, uh, affiliated branch in Kaliningrad. Um, on the upper uh, image, uh, you see the project. And uh, uh, on the lower image, you see how 
the building uh, is uh, uh, under construction and we are planning to finish it by the end of 2023 uh, and uh, to open the first exhibitions in spring of 24. And the last building uh, is the building uh, of the joint museum and concert uh, uh, complex in Vladivostok, uh, designed by Norwegian architectural studios Nakheta, uh, the ones who built famous uh, opera theater in uh, Oslo. Uh, and uh, uh, it consists of three parts merged together. In one part will be the museum with participation of uh, the State Hermitage and the State Russian Museum. In another part there will be a new stage for Gergiev's Mariinsky Theater and highest artistic school in the third uh, part of the building. Uh, of course we cannot wait until the buildings will be uh, finished and construction work especially um, in Russia um, is always taking a little bit uh, longer than uh, is planned. So we are trying to be present in all three cities with our temporary exhibitions which we organized on different other platforms, with our educational programs which we organize uh, in the temporary uh, educational spaces which exist uh, uh, in uh, all three uh, cities and uh, one of uh, our most interesting projects was uh, a, a creation of a special pavilion in Vladivostok uh, during the um, economic uh, forum uh, which is usually held uh, in this city in early uh, September and it was a pavilion which presented um, a very non-traditional, a very non-conservative view uh, of what is the Tretikov Gallery on the upper slide on the left. Uh, you can see that we created several models of the spaces of the Tretikov Gallery repeating in every detail the interiors of existing galleries and the visitors felt themselves as if they are Alice in Wonderland who all of a sudden became big and the world kept being very small. And uh, it was amazing, we had 16,000 visitors within uh, one month uh, uh, in a space which was not a museum or not um, an acknowledged space which was created from sea containers, again using the funds uh, of one of the major container shipping companies uh, in Russia, using their enthusiasm in supporting everything we are doing currently in uh, uh, Vladivostok. So, uh, I would like to uh, speak a little bit about museum's budget. Uh, it's in uh, rubles, for your understanding, a ruble is equivalent to, um, one second, one dollar is equivalent to 75 rubles. Uh, so um, I show the uh, development here of our uh, finances uh, from uh, 2018 to 2021. And um, the blue uh, line is uh, our annual budget. Uh, the green line is what we earn and what we raise. And the gray line is what the state is uh, uh, giving to the Tretikov Gallery uh, on the annual uh, basis. And you can see that in 2020, uh, our um, own earnings and the amount of money which we raised went down, but uh, we should be very thankful to the state and to the Ministry of Culture that understanding that the museum is closed for five months and that nobody is coming to the galleries, nobody is paying for the tickets or for uh, lectures or for any kind of uh, courses. We have different activities in our uh, museum. We have uh, uh, three uh, big uh, uh, film auditoriums where we show films on celluloid and uh, uh, with DCP. We have concerts, we have theatre performances, we have three musical festivals annually and I uh, hardly can name uh, any 
important Russian performer. Maybe Anna Nitrepka didn't sing with us, but all others like Ildar Abdrazakov, uh, Albigin Shigimuradova, um, Hibla Girzmava, and many other outstanding uh, singers and uh, world-known performers performed in these musical festivals. So, going back uh, to the budget, the state really supported us uh, in a very serious way, which enabled us, and we have a staff of 1,500 people, and the guards and the uh, uh, ladies who are gallery attendants, they all are part of our staff. So we didn't fire any single person during that year when we were closed for five uh, months. And you can also see that uh, in 2021 uh, we were even more successful uh, financially than in the most successful uh, year of 2019 which was like the climatic year for the whole Tretikov Gallery, speaking about our activities, attendance and finances. So that's what happened with our attendance. So uh, we started with uh, uh, 1.4 million in 2014. In the most successful year of 2019, we reached 2 million uh, 836,000 uh, visitors. Then we dropped, uh, we lost 70% of our uh, uh, visitors because we were closed and because after we opened we had very tough restrictions. We could accept only 30-40% of uh, our former uh, audience um, and also people were reluctant to go to museums, which are public uh, places, though we followed all of the restrictions, wearing masks, keeping the distance, having just one route, all what every museum in the world was doing. But uh, I'm uh, really happy that in 2021, when we worked for 11 months, we managed to raise our attendance, even with the limitations to 50% of what we can accept in our uh, galleries, that we reached a figure of uh, 1,582,000 uh, visitors. And uh, we are not speaking only about visitors' numbers, though uh, we are a museum uh, which is charging uh, entrance fees as any other uh, state uh, uh, museum of Russia. Mm, it's the quality of our exhibitions, our uh, installations of uh, permanent collection, our uh, activities, uh, uh, our performances, concerts, lectures, uh, um, studios where we work with different kind of children, teenagers, uh, adults, uh, people with uh, different uh, kind uh, of uh, d diseases, including uh, children with uh, the Down syndrome and children with uh, autism. Uh, when we were finally reopened in January of 2021, we saw an incredible flow of people and incredible raise of interest because people started to understand that in the world where there are so many dangers, in the world uh, where you don't know what will happen tomorrow, you can uh, have a museum as a place where you are faced with something which is absolutely authentic, which gives you very strong and sincere emotions, which forces you to think, to think about great things and not mundane, uh, 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 reality and which helps you to survive and to keep your mental uh, health. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about what we managed to do with our uh, exhibitions during these last uh, uh, seven years. What you see on the screen is uh, the first incredible success of our temporary exhibition. It was uh, the first exhibition 
big exhibition which was done uh, uh, during uh, the year when I came as a director. Uh, I already found this exhibition in the plans and it was devoted to Valentin Sirov, one of the greatest Russian uh, artists, and I managed to write my uh, uh, magister thesis about Sirov. Uh, so I really forced my colleagues to change their concept, to change the design, to change uh, everything. And it resulted in incredible success uh, within three and a half months, we got half million visitors for this exhibition of a Russian artist. We collected works from 34 um, museums in Russia and from abroad. And what you see on the screen is the line. Uh, we didn't know how to sell electronic tickets at that moment. So there were huge lines. People waited for two hours with minus 10, minus 15. Uh, to get to that uh, exhibition. And you can see what was happening at the opening of the uh, exhibition. Of course, it was pre-COVID uh, time, so when I look at these photos, I understand that we lived at that moment in another world. Finally, we were to uh, extend the working hours during the last week until 12 o'clock at night, and the last day we worked until 4 o'clock at night. And uh, police was uh, uh, bringing their hot tea and coffee, and uh, uh, Moscow Transportation Department brought buses which were standing there so that people could get there and uh, get a little bit of uh, warmth. Uh, but from that moment on, we understood that we cannot work like that, that we should establish um, a very, very tough system of uh, uh, timing. So since that moment, we are selling uh, tickets for our exhibitions only for a definite time to avoid lines. And of course, we are selling online majority of uh, uh, tickets for everything, for exhibitions, for permanent galleries, for our different kind of activities, educational programs, and uh, so on and so on. So I'll show you some examples uh, of exhibitions which we uh, did uh, in the last years uh, moving uh, um, in uh, a direction which became very trendy. Uh, but we didn't know that it's trendy. We worked this concept ourselves that exhibition should be, uh, in fact, a new artifact. Uh, every time we are inviting an outstanding architect, and sometimes we manage to work with great international uh, architects, and we consider each exhibition to be really an art piece, which is being conceived as an art piece, and the creation of which is a creative process. Uh, and these exhibitions became very immersive. And, uh, they produced much stronger impression than traditional shows when you just hang the artworks on uh, the walls in a white cube. What you see on the screen is an exhibition uh, which we uh, did together with Tate Modern and the Hermitage. We were the last venue for this show, but we changed it dramatically. It was a solo show of the greatest living Russian artist Ilya Kabakov, Remember, I told you that we finally received his studio, which we are turning in a museum. He's alive, he lives, but he's very sick and he lives in uh, America. So these are some photos uh, from uh, this installation, uh, including this fantastic piece from uh, Pompidou Center um, by this artist entitled a man who flew into the space from his room in a communal uh, apartment, which we managed to get uh, for this show, as well as works from all different kind of collections in Europe, Russia, uh, and uh, America. Uh, exhibition which we managed to uh, do in two venues, uh, in Moscow and in Dresden, 
in 2021, which was postponed from 2020, called Dreams of Freedom Romanticism in Germany and uh, Russia, in Russia and Germany. Mm, it was our cooperation with the State Museums of uh, Dresden. Mm, and also uh, the third party was one of the greatest living architects, Daniel Liebeskind. I worked with him uh, on the exhibition Moscow Berlin Berlin Moscow in 1995 uh, in Berlin uh, in Martin Gropius Bau. And when we started thinking with my uh, German colleague Mario Nackermann, director of that museum, whom we can invite to handle that concept, which was really very modern, unique, we've used uh, classical German and Russian art of the time of Romanticism with contemporary art, with works of artists like uh, uh, Bill Viola or James uh, Tarrell or Marlene uh, Dumas or Tony Oisler, some Russian artists like Kabakov or Erik Bulatov, a very young Russian uh, artist, uh, um, Andrei Kuskin. So we both came to the idea that it should be Daniel Libeskin, and he created an absolute masterpiece. I'm sure books will be written about his architecture for this exhibition here, uh, sorry, in Moscow and in uh, uh, Dresden. And here you can see some of his designs. These were two intersecting labyrinths which were cut by a big cross and uh, his concept was that there shouldn't be anything uh, um, at the end of each ends of the cross that people would think that there is a road to infinity because infinity, it's a very romantic concept. And here you can see the photo of the public discussion uh, with Daniel Liebeskind who came uh, for the opening of this exhibition both to Moscow and to Dresden. A uh, very important show for us was a show of Russian avant-garde artist Ivan Kudryshov and you can see how different is the architecture of our exhibitions and that is what is attracting so many uh, visitors. Uh, during these years we had maybe six or seven shows with attendance over half a million each uh, reaching 600,000 uh, visitors. This show was very important for us, not only that we worked with rather young but very creative Russian uh, architects, but that was our first fundamental cooperation with Uzbekistan and with the city of Nukus, which has the second biggest in the world collection of the art of Russian avant-garde. We have the third. Uh, and uh, Uzbekistan earlier didn't participate in any exhibitions abroad and for them uh, this project was a kind of a breaking through and now they are having exhibitions in the fall in Louvre and uh, Institut du Monde uh, Arabe. Um, and uh, uh, Mikhail Vrubil show, uh, exhibition which I think was the exhibition that people in Russia spoke about more than about any other uh, exhibition uh, held in Moscow, St. Petersburg, or any other part uh, of uh, Russia. It's one of the greatest Russian artists. Uh, people know his name, but they didn't, before that exhibition, they didn't understand, in fact, that his art paved the way for the art of the 20th uh, century and that the drama of his life, he ended up his life in a madhouse being absolutely blind and he stayed in madhouse for seven years and during the first three years he worked and created incredible artworks which nobody could call the artwork of the artist of the turn of the 19th and 20th century. They are almost non-figurative and so many of them were focused on the subject of pearls. He had uh, a, a, a pearl, um, shell, shell, a pearl shell in his collection, and we showed this uh, pearl shell. It was endlessly looking into the reflections of, on the surfaces of that pearl and creating out of that huge colored and sometimes black and white uh, drawings uh, which are 
incredible and the whole story uh, of his life, which we told through his art, uh, was forcing so many people uh, to cry when they were leaving from uh, the galleries. So that's how the exhibition uh, looked like, and here we worked with uh, outstanding Russian-German architect Sergei uh, Choman. Uh, this is an exhibition which we are having currently, where we use a lot of uh, multi-media, uh, making exhibitions more and more immersive. So I would like to tell a little bit about our recent international uh, projects. Here you can see a team of uh, 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 people uh, who are uh, the core of those who are changing uh, uh, the Tretikov Gallery, uh, which makes selfie, who makes selfie, sorry, who makes selfie in Olafur Eliasson's uh, installation at the exhibition, which was just over less than a month ago, Diversity United, which combined 300 works of the greatest European artists from um, uh, 32 countries, uh, uh, including works by um, uh, uh, Gerhard Richter, Anselm Kiefer, Olafur Eliasson, uh, um, Georg Baselitz, uh, uh, and many, Annette Messager. Uh, it's hard to, Monachatum, it's hard to tell who was not in the show. It's more uh, complex to tell who was not in the show than to list all who were in the show. Uh, so, uh, though we are um, a museum of Russian art, uh, when uh, Pavel Tretikov in 1892 donated his gallery to the city of Moscow, uh, he combined his collection of Russian art, and by the moment he died in late 19th century, collection consisted of 3,500 artworks. So he combined it with collection of his late brother Sergei, who collected Western European art. Then we uh, got a serious donation from the widow of Mikhail Morozov. Part of these works were exhibited in Paris in a uh, famous exhibition uh, in Louis Vuitton Foundation. So with uh, 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 Morozov's donation, we received a collection of great works of French Impressionists. So uh, in uh, late 19th, early 20th century, Russian art was shown next to Western European art and in the context of Western European art. And only after revolution, Russian art stayed at the Tretikov and all Western European art went to the Hermitage and to the Pushkin. So we uh, are very much interested in making exhibitions from greatest world museums and we did fantastic cooperation with the Vatican museums, uh, bringing to Russia 42 artworks from the walls of the uh, Pinacotheque in the Vatican, none coming from the depository. And among the works which were sent to Moscow was the famous Deposition of Christ uh, by Caravaggio, one of the greatest masterpieces of uh, uh, Italian uh, art. Here you uh, see our president who visited privately uh, this uh, exhibition and was uh, very much impressed by uh, it and uh, in exchange we sent to the Vatican Museum's exhibition of 54 masterpieces from the walls of the Tretikov Gallery and I had an incredible honor of taking Pope Francis for 40 minutes uh, through that show, not during the opening but also on a private uh, visit before the opening hours. Uh, we did an exhibition, uh, a very interesting exhibition entitled Russian Avant-Garde Pioneers and uh, Direct Descendants uh, in uh, Doha, in uh, Qatar, uh, presenting works of the artists of Russian Avant-Garde and uh, non-figuration and uh, um, mobiles created by Soviet artists in late 50s, early uh, 60s. Uh, we brought to Russia uh, the strongest in a decade exhibition of Edvard Munch from Edvard Munch Museum. And it's not me who told that it's the best exhibition of Edvard Munch from his collection. 
Uh, it was the director of this museum, and here you can see John Bon Jovi next to the screen by Munch uh, uh, at the Tretzikov uh, Gallery. And you remember the third building which I showed. This is the building which is a kind of a drill box, so both the Vatican exhibition and Edward Munch exhibition took place there. So, and here we come to um, one of the greatest successes of Russian art, exhibition uh, entitled Icons of Modern Art, the Morozov Collection, which uh, was just over in uh, Paris. Um, I came for the uh, opening. We lent 34 paintings from Morozov Collection for that exhibition. And here you can see Emmanuel Macron in front of uh, uh, Malevich from the Tretikov Gallery and uh, uh, the hangers who are hanging the work by Mikhail Vrubil, whose art was a revelation at this exhibition, but it was removed three weeks after the opening to take part in our big Vrubil uh, retrospective. But uh, this exhibition, apart from presenting the greatest works of impressions in post-impressionism, uh, was a kind of an eye opening for not only Parisian audience, but for the whole of the world, uh, this exhibition uh, had the audience of 1,250,000 visitors. Uh, so now reputation of Russian art is different from, from what it was a few years ago. And uh, we did several very important shows last year abroad. Uh, one took place in Germany, in Baden-Baden uh, uh, and in Potsdam. Uh, entitled Impressionism in Russia, and I'm proud, it's in Barberini Museum, I'm proud that uh, it received more attention than the Monet retrospective which uh, preceded this exhibition. And one of the hugest international successes of the Tretikov Gallery in uh, 2021 was, was Ilya Repin retrospective in Petit Palais in Paris. Uh, it is understandable that you couldn't get tickets for Morozov exhibition, but uh, tickets were sold out for four or five days ahead for a rip in the uh, retrospective. Uh, and um, they had 110,000 uh, visitors, which for two and a half months was an amazing result in a space of 700 square meters. Uh, here I'm, I'm showing you incredible installation by Anselm Kiefer, which we had in the exhibition Diversity United, Contemporary European Art. I told you about that, about uh, 90 artists from 32 countries. This is my most beloved object in that uh, exhibition, and we um, had uh, um, a very interesting conversation about this piece with the Foreign Minister of Germany, uh, Anna Baerbock, when she visited uh, Moscow and uh, uh, found time to come to see this exhibition. Uh, speaking about uh, the pandemic, which obviously uh, limited our offline uh, options and possibilities. We uh, were in close contact with our European colleagues and we very well understood, even before the closing of the museum, that our museum will be closed as well as all our Russian museums. So we started like mad, working literally 24 uh, hours, uh, seven days a week, to shoot material for programs which we were editing then and putting online step uh, by step. Um, with the help of our sponsors, Birbank, uh, we produced two fantastic films. Uh, one was called Tretikov Gallery with Sergei Shnurov. You can see myself and him on the photo to the right. So these two films this one lasted 70 minutes, another one lasted 60 minutes with another celebrity, famous actor, Konstantin Khabensky. Um, this, these films were a kind of um, uh, improvisation, improvisational dialogue of two people standing in front of uh, selected paintings. 
I selected the paintings, and uh, these are the paintings from my recent book published by Scala Publishing in London, Director's Choice, about the Tretikov Gallery. Uh, but we didn't rehearse, we didn't uh, discuss with each other what we will be saying. So uh, the impression when you watch this, uh, these films, and they are still online on the YouTube, and this film with Sergei Shnurov, who was a, and still is a very famous pop star in Russia, we received the audience of 1.4 million people. <clears throat> and it was a kind of a new genre to speak about art, not as a kind of a speaking hat. Uh, the camera was behind us, and those who watched those films, they thought that they are standing just behind us, and they have the privilege uh, of listening to our uh, very intimate and very open uh, conversation. Uh, so we um, produced a lot of programs, and uh, our audience enlarged in 2020, online audience, enlarged in 2020 from 2.5 million to uh, 4.6 million, and in 21 to 20 million people. I really hardly believe that, but we give honest uh, uh, numbers. Uh, that's what uh, had happened, and this had you can see the increase of our audience in different kind of social media. Some of them are not, unfortunately, anymore acting in Russia, but that's what has uh, happened. And uh, uh, we invited some young staff members to work with social media. And as a result, we uh, changed our audience and we enlarged our audience, because those ones who were with us online in 2020 and early 21, they then started coming to a museum where they had never been uh, before. And we see that the average age of our audience is changing dramatically, and we see in our galleries, especially uh, in the 20th century galleries, we see so many people aged 20, 25, 30, 35. And when I came to the museum, half of our visitors were rentners. We know it because of the senior citizen uh, tickets. And, and this was uh, an incredible achievement, and I'm so grateful and thankful for my colleagues for that. So we carry out different kind of activities around the exhibitions, and here you can see the discussion in our public spaces about our recent exhibition. We have, uh, uh, in two of our buildings, we have artists, we have studios. We have studios for uh, children, for small children, starting with four, for school children, for teenagers, for students. And uh, we teach painting, uh, we teach different graphic techniques, we teach sculpture, we teach digital, digital art. And again, we managed to do all that with the help of our sponsor, who provide us with money for renovation of our studios and for uh, different kind of materials for possibility of inviting very interesting teachers, uh, not only the ones who work at the Tretikov Gallery, but the ones who can represent the most modern and contemporary uh, approach. What is so important for us and it's our know-how, is a work with children and teenagers and young people with Down syndrome and with uh, those children and adolescents who have uh, autism. I don't know how our, our teachers do that, uh, but they are so enthusiastic um, about working with these children with these people, and getting out of them almost the same level of creativity which is visible and present in every normal child or teenager. Uh, and it's unbelievable to see how these children and uh, teenagers catch some very complex ideas, like they were shown uh, medieval mosaics, then the works by Mikhail Vrubil, who in his work followed uh, the uh, style of medieval uh, uh, masters who made mosaics. 
and they understood that that's the same principle and were creating their own works which were following the medieval art and the art of Vruvin. Here you can see a performance which we organize uh, two times a year in our galleries and we do it during working hours because one of the biggest problems is not only to work with these children and to develop new methodics but to get people accustomed that they live with us and next to us and one shouldn't be scared when faced with these kids. And you see them, they had a ball and uh, uh, were dancing in our 18th century galleries in a very schematic and in very schematic and creative costumes. These costumes were made out of craft paper and of white paper. Uh, it's not textile. Um, and they looked so beautiful and one of them came to my office with his teacher to bring me the uh, invitation. I was touched uh, to tears to see that and to see how happy he was. Uh, we also uh, work a lot with uh, uh, people uh, who don't see very well, who are blind. You can see a lady, uh, one of the visitors with a dog. We allow that and we're children friendly. We allow carriages and children with uh, uh, small babies uh, in their kangaroo uh, bag. Um, uh, so uh, we have some uh, uh, materials uh, uh, which are created with special uh, kind of uh, um, script for the blind. And we work with those who don't hear well, so we have tours with pseudo uh, translation and this tradition goes back to our father founder Pavel Tritikov who was the first in Russia to establish a special school for deaf people. So um, I just mentioned uh, uh, the name of uh, Pavel Tritikov and here you can see uh, photos of two brothers, two Tritikovs, Pavel and Sergei, Pavel to the left, Sergei to the right. Um, and uh, in the middle, uh, you see the photo from uh, uh, the Tretikov gallery during uh, the time uh, of Pavel Tretikov. You can see that the handing is very, very uh, intense. Uh, um, when we started working with my team on developing our new uh, plan and uh, new strategy, uh, we understood that the best thing was to go back to the roots because so many things which sound and look very trendy and which everybody is talking about and implementing, they go back to the ideas which originated at the time when Tretikov brothers collected um, art and created uh, museums. So we pushed forward this slogan about getting back to the roots and that turning to the past paves the way for your uh, future. And here I come to the story which is very dear uh, to me, the story of how we created uh, a memorial house and a house uh, which is a museum devoted to Tretyakov of brothers, to Russian merchants and to the Mecenas traditions in Russia and in Moscow. So here you can see uh, also some views of the galleries uh, um, with the furniture to the left, which belonged to Sergei Tretikov, uh, which was after his death brought to the uh, uh, Tretikov gallery and uh, Pavel created special memorial rooms where he put furniture, which belonged to his brother, um, and uh, the paintings which belonged to, to his brother and, which his brother was collecting. So, uh, when we started working on our strategic planning, uh, our British colleagues, uh, and Britain is very well known for uh, the house museums of prominent writers, artists, uh, whoever, men of letters, uh, they said, you simply don't understand that these small museums, these artists' houses, are jewels in your crown. 
you should develop them. Uh, and uh, uh, then I have learned, a few months after I became a director, that just between two of our buildings, and they are in a walking distance, it's 15 to 20 minutes from one building to the other, that uh, behind a huge contemporary hotel, uh, there is a building you see the condition to the left. And this building, where homeless people lived at the moment when I first came there, uh, is the house where Tretikov brothers were born and where they spent 12 and 10 years of their life. Uh, of course, nothing had survived from that time. Uh, they moved uh, when Pavel was 12 years old to a house nearby. And this house, which belonged to them, they rented and then it was not a house after the revolution, it became a combination of communal apartments. So when I came out from that building, I told myself that create a museum in this abundant building and pay tribute finally to these great people, great citizens, great minds, great visioners would be my primarily, primary, primary goal. So to the left you see uh, the photo from uh, last December uh, when we started the process of inauguration of this uh, museum. It took us five years. We had two projects which we paid for and threw into the garbage can because we were not satisfied with that. Uh, we, my colleagues were sent for two weeks to Great Britain and finally we found a company which did a project which we loved and which we managed to realize using sponsors' money. And this enabled us to think through every detail and to commission the best which you can find in Russia and speaking about equipment, uh, this small house museum where we present works from collections of Bell's brothers is equipped with all necessary climatic uh, equipment, very modern and very small because the house is small and it was very um, complicated to find a place for this equipment because it needs volume and square meters. So, to the left you see the building, how I saw it when I came. And I thought it's a shame. Uh, and we all, like, when we started thinking about what we can do, uh, we thought that that should become one of our major goals, though it's a small building with just 400 square meters. So now you see uh, the museum and what we managed to do and what is interesting, we turned the main hall, uh, which was a kind of a reception room, uh, into a gallery and hung on one side of uh, the gallery works from collection of Pavel Tretikov and uh, on the other side of the gallery we hung the works from collection of his brother uh, Sergei, which we received as a long-term loan from the State Pushkin Museum of Fine Arts. And uh, um, in the rooms where we put the furniture of uh, uh, Tretikov brothers, some objects, very few ones, which belonged to them, everything else was not a kind of a typical furniture of that time. It was a furniture which was made out of wood, uh, following the uh, existing photos from the houses of Tretikov brothers later, but painted in grey, so that nobody would mix it up with memorial objects which belonged to Tretikov uh, brothers. Uh, we also established the endowment fund, and uh, uh, we did it again with the help uh, of our supporters and uh, sponsors and uh, we created two funds, one to enlarge our collection uh, because what we are buying now we can buy uh, only with the money coming from the sponsors or we can ask the sponsors to buy something which we really miss in our uh, collection. And another fund is to support these small museums, artist houses 
and uh, um, something like uh, half, uh, uh, $400,000, uh, um, which is uh, a um, persons coming from the endowment, was used for the reconstruction of Pavel uh, Tretikov's uh, uh, house. And creating this endowment and uh, uh, working with uh, potential sponsors and convincing people to support uh, arts. We are following uh, the ideas of Pavel Tretikov and one of uh, um, uh, the sentences which you can find in his writings is reproduced on the screen. Uh, so uh, what is uh, acquired from society is to be returned to society. Uh, so that shows the uh, scheme of our endowment fund. Uh, and uh, we are also working very hard now to make our collection, which is comparatively small, only 200,000 objects compared to 5 million in the possession of the Hermitage or the State uh, History and Museum. Uh, we uh, work a lot to make our collection available online and not only the masterpieces and everybody knows about major masterpieces at least in Russia they are pictures which were reproduced in textbooks um, during the time when for five months we were sitting at home working uh, distantly uh, our s curators and we have 180 curators our curators wrote uh, uh, 3,500 texts, new texts, about different objects from our uh, collections. Not only masterpieces, but drawings which you hardly can see in permanent galleries or only from time to time in temporary exhibitions. Uh, uh, stage designs, architectural designs, icons. We have an uh, incredible collection of icons, but we show maybe only 15% of our icon collection. Uh, so uh, we created uh, uh, the resource called My Tretikov, Maya Tretikovka, and um, we thought a lot about the title. We wanted it to be a kind of your home museum so that you will feel attached to it. Um, and uh, um, it can be accessed free and uh, um, when we launched it uh, a year ago there were a thousand objects available which you can uh, look at, you can read the text, uh, you can see the provenance and for us it's very important to indicate the donation. Uh, but there were also many images which were covered by some screen. And with a small donation, which is something like $1.2, uh, you can open this image and it becomes available to every visitor of this website. And uh, uh, you can give different kind of donations from $1.2 up to $70, um, and can receive the status of patron, mecenate, uh, and you can create your own collection uh, on the basis of the Tretikov Gallery collection. Uh, you can become a patron of this uh, painting and you can send it and donate it to your friend or to your girlfriend and to your boyfriend. So this is a kind of involvement which keeps people uh, interactive with this uh, resource and keeps them there. And I'm happy uh, that you are the first audience to whom we are presenting um, a small uh, pilot uh, uh, stage of this project in English, because originally it's in Russian, which means that it is available only for those who read in Russian. Though the geography of those who uh, came to visit this resource was very wide and still is very wide. So you can scan uh, that QR code and then uh, you will come to the landing um, where there will be not many 
uh, but uh, like a uh, couple of dozens of uh, uh, masterpieces and you can get the idea how this uh, resource uh, works. Needless to say that it's created again using sponsors' uh, money. Uh, we were all those years uh, working, putting in front of us uh, one goal after the other. You achieve this, and you know very well that in order even to be at the same place, you need to move forward. But in order to move forward, you are really to run. Uh, it forces, from time to time, uh, too fast run. Uh, and uh, uh, it forces people not to polish or not to get into every detail. Uh, but what is the biggest and the highest motivation for all of us um, is that what we do is so necessary for the people. Uh, it was necessary before the pandemic. During the pandemic, it became one of the means with which we were literally saving uh, the people enclosed in their houses. And uh, now, um, with, with uh, the contemporary uh, situation, we understand very well, we feel and we know it from what people are writing to us in social media, that what we are doing is absolutely uh, indispensable and people need it, they wait for it, uh, and we have no right to stop. We have no right to feel pity for ourselves that we're working too hard or running too fast. And thus we are paving the way for the museum of the future. And with this last slide, I end up my presentation. Um, this is uh, uh, a view of our annual uh, trustees and sponsors reception, which was held uh, in early February 2020, just before the pandemic. And uh, the idea of the evening and the idea of everything, including presentation, which was the most uh, avant-garde presentation I ever did in my life, and I don't think I will do something like that um, once again, uh, what I'm doing now is very conservative type of, of, a, uh, of a slideshow or PowerPoint uh, presentation. But uh, that was really a very emblematic evening and very emblematic uh, night, which indicated that uh, we're facing the future and uh, we know uh, what we should do to uh, fulfill in the future what we were created for by our father founders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Zelfira Regulova for this, uh, not uh, conference, but uh, lecture <laughs> about uh, museology, a lecture which brought us uh, from the past, as you said, and uh, giving, uh, paying tribute to the Pavel and his brother, uh, Tetrakov, who were at the origin of these uh, large museums that you developed and uh, you made a, a real panorama of what you have done uh, at the, with the responsibility that you have at the Titriakov Gallery. And I must say that all of us, we, were, we are impressed by the importance of the work, but also the importance of the vision, the strategic vision that you developed and that I think we should all take note and benefit from it. So I want to know if there are questions in the room, because unfortunately uh, we have also a lot of people following 
your uh, presentation, beautiful presentation, a rich presentation, uh, but uh, uh, they cannot put questions, I think, for the, for the time being by uh, internet, but in the room, if there are questions, we can uh, uh, yes, ask. Here. Please, you have the floor. Thank you for this um, interesting lecture. Um, you've mentioned that um, the events had became online due to the pandemic. I'd like to know in the future, the future events, the future exhibitions will be online or um, it's just temporary? Um, it's an interesting question, but uh, uh, not quite easy to uh, answer. Uh, by profession, I'm exhibition curator and I curated many big international shows of Russian uh, art, which attracted hundreds of thousands and even million of uh, uh, people. Uh, for me, um, it's like a theater performance. Uh, yes, of course, in order to uh, make what you did memorable and accessible to the widest audience, uh, we are creating uh, special films which we then put online uh, we uh, did 360 degrees uh, shooting for some of our uh, exhibitions. We are now uh, editing, uh, it, this is something new for us, uh, it's um, uh, augmented reality um, online uh, uh, presentation of uh, Mikhail Vrubil's uh, uh, show. Um, but. Um, I think that you uh, can consider uh, films and presentations of exhibitions online as a means by which uh, these exhibitions reach very wide audience, but they cannot substitute uh, a real exhibition, which you need to experience with all of uh, yourself with your mind, with your senses, with your body, with your heart. Um, and in this case, I was uh, quite often during the pandemic asked, you are so active online, aren't you afraid that people will be satisfied with what you are doing online and will not come to the museum? But on the contrary, what we did online was a kind of appetizer for the people who then wanted to have a full meal and started coming to a museum where they didn't come before. And this immersive uh, type of exhibitions uh, is very successful with young people who need much more than just a conservative hanging of the works in a very traditional uh, museum. They need involvement. And that's what we are doing with our exhibitions. And it's very complicated uh, to try to recreate it online. Thank you so much. Thank Hopefully you. one day I would uh, visit. Thank you. Any other question? Yes, please, madam. Yes. Good evening. So thank you so much for the lecture. It was honestly a true pl pleasure. Really loved it. And thank you for what you're doing for the gallery and for Russia itself. Uh, my question actually is about your future plans in probably collaboration with Bahrain. Are you planning to do um, anything in Bahrain, in the kingdom here, like any kind of exhibition from the gallery? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, of course. Uh, first of all, I think that uh, for us and for my staff it's very important to come here. For those people who work on the reconstruction of four museums which are artist studios, uh, out of seven, only uh, three are open. Four are closed because of a dramatic condition of these buildings. Uh, and we are working very hard. Uh, in uh, three cases, we already have uh, uh, the projects, the planning. In one case, we still work on it. Uh, but I think that for those who are in charge of these projects in Moscow, 
it's incredibly important to come here and to see what you uh, did here and what uh, Sheikh Hamid did uh, with all of those houses. I hope I visited majority uh, of them, but I could go on. Uh, if, uh, yeah, I know that there are still some for next time uh, because I'm to fly uh, to Venice uh, this uh, night. Um, uh, it would be very interesting for me uh, also to have a chance to present Russian art here in Bahrain. Uh, um, I was working on uh, several exhibitions in the region. Uh, we did exhibition from Kuwait, from the collection of Sheikh Hussal Sabah. Uh, when I was working at the Kremlin, uh, we did exhibition in uh, Abu Dhabi, we did two exhibitions in Doha. Um, and uh, uh, each time we were trying to find a subject and a focus which would be of the biggest and greatest interest in the region. So I would be more than happy to have in the coming years, as soon as possible, um, an exhibition of Russian art held here. And uh, um, so we are open to any ideas, any suggestions, uh, um, because uh, I think that you here know your audience much better. Um, I didn't tell this while I was showing you um, exhibitions from Western museums which we presented. It was always an exchange exhibition. And what we did, we asked carte blanche to work with their collections, but provided them with carte blanche to work with our collections, because we both know our audience better. And that is why, for example, Munch exhibition was incredibly successful. But our exhibition at the Munch Museum was the most successful exhibition in this museum ever done by their curators. So I will be happy to, to host any of the curators from the foundation uh, and uh, uh, to start this uh, discussion and will be happy uh, to come here again. I see that uh, Her Excellency Sheikh Hamey is, uh, you know, saying yes for this uh, proposal because I think you didn't have time enough to, to see everything but also to see that in Bahrain uh, there is every year a big exhibition of local artists uh, and this is done since 45 years I think if I'm not mistaken and you have a very very important uh, uh, group of young artists uh, male and female from Bahrain uh, having a, an extraordinary uh, creativity, I think, yes, you, 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 you can really have an exchange of mm -hmm. uh, works of arts between your collections, uh, but also from the collections that exist here, in addition to what you have seen in archaeology and in uh, the traditional way of, uh, of presenting uh, the works. But you have seen also that the spaces exist in, in uh, in, yeah, in, the in, Bahrain, in the National Museum, National yeah. Museum, in the National Theatre, so you have a lot of possibilities for exchanging, and there is, as uh, it was said yesterday in our private uh, discussion with Sheikh Hamé, uh, there is all, there there are already two exhibitions presented at the Hermitage from Bahrain in the field of archaeology. Any other question? So, if if not, I would like just to quote what you wrote uh, in, uh, in your uh, you know, papers, which shows why you are friend with uh, Sheikh Hamey Al Khalifa and why you have similar vision about the role of public-private partnership. And I have just two sentences that you wrote, uh, Professor Selvi. Uh, we need to combine our effort and create a unique atmosphere Without counting on government support, we need to count on support from, from Patreon, Moscow ones or local ones. I would like to point out that all the big exhibitions in the Tritirakov Gallery, 
the whole country spoke about were made with sponsor money. The key, the key to success is the unbelievable commitment and enthusiasm of those who want to change the situation for the better. Thank you for what you have, what you have said today and also what you wrote in your uh, publications. And I, I thank all the audience. Thank you so much. It was long enough, as I understood looking at the time when I was over. We hope to receive you once again. Thank you. With pleasure. Congratulations.